Okay, so let's begin. And, uh, you know, before we go on, uh, do, does anybody have any immediate questions? What we'll do is I, I'll try and repeat a little bit of what we did last time around and uh, remind you of some of the things. So, um, so uh, you know, let, let me first pause and ask you if you have any immediate questions. I have a question, but uh, yeah, related please. to yeah, yeah. so yeah. related to this wild anomaly. Okay, uh, the wild anomaly question. Maybe uh, what what we can do is we can keep it for maybe at the end of the class or something like that. And also, uh, let's let's see if yeah, yeah. okay okay. Shudipto is also around. I don't. I can't see it. All right, very. Good. Participants, Shudipta is not 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 yet around. If he is, uh, you know, since he, I mean, took the class, it would sort of maybe make sense for him to uh, answer this, or or you could maybe drop us an email as well. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Let's let's just uh, remind you of what we uh, what we did last time around. At least the part that is going to be of importance uh, going forward. Now, uh, we are interested in highest weight representations. Okay. So, and I I uh, told you at the beginning, uh, reminded you of what the SU two thing mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. and um, and there you you remember the algebra. The SU two algebra mm -hmm. looked like this where we have, um, you know, we have uh, written this J plus minus as a raising and lowering operators. And then we said that we are going to, as you know very well, uh, you're, you're going to uh, label states with, with uh, you know, JZ or J naught if you wish. So uh, here, and then we said that there is a, you know, uh, a state such that the value of this M uh, the eigenvalue of, of this J naught is bounded from above. So this particular state uh, is, is given by this and uh, you cannot raise the eigenvalue anymore. So J plus acting on it gives you zero. So all other eigenstates are obtained from this by acting with J minus and, and, and you know, so you can, uh, so, so you can sort of write any state in, in, in this uh, by acting J minus on, on this highest weight state J. Now uh, you can calculate the inner product of the states and so on and so forth. And the, the idea was that, uh, you know, if you have a state J minus J minus one, then that's of zero norm and any subsequent states act, I mean, from it obtained by with, with J minus will also have zero norm. So these will be singular vectors that we will decouple from the first two J plus one states. And, and, and you know, we, we saw a reason for it because, and uh, so, so we, we will see that any matrix element, uh, you know, um, of, of an operator A is actually zero when, uh, when you take a sandwich between these two states, M and M prime, where M prime is, is the null, uh, null vector. So uh, the uh, representation space uh, truncates to this first J plus one, one states, and this forms the unitary finite dimensional uh, representations of SU2. So what we do in the, uh, I mean, for our case, when we are looking at, at, the, I mean, at the Virasoro algebra now, is something very similar. What we will do is we will label states with, with the eigenvalue of L naught, and that is going to be H. And we, we see that, you know, uh, LN sort of lowers this eigenvalue. So what, what we're going to be doing is we are, we are going to be saying that this, this uh, you know, there is some, some state for which you, you can't lower it further. So all LNs acting on H is equal to zero for N and for N um, greater than zero. And uh, you know, if you act L minus ends on this, these will produce new states. All of these states together form the, uh, I mean, Verma module, which is labeled by the central charge and this weight H, okay? For example, you can write down the first few few things that we did, did earlier. So at the first level, you, I mean, at the zeroth level, you have just H, then you have L minus one acting on H and then 
you know, from the second level, you, you can have various ways of acting on, on uh, acting these states, acting these operators on, uh, on the state H to give you uh, the states at level N. So this goes as the partition of the number N, if you wish. So, uh, so that, that was one thing. And then uh, what I also reminded you of is uh, the Hermitian, I mean, Hermitian sort of uh, uh, I mean, conjugation of this old LM, uh, you know, as, as we have seen earlier, this, this gives us L of minus M. And uh, so if you were to find out what the, I mean, inner product of a state this with a state that is, uh, then all you have to do is you you need need to find out so so you know you need to turn this thing around and that that should uh, this will give you some you know l uh, l with uh, pluses here and l's with minus indices here okay remember that l not is actually, uh, I mean, L dot dagger is equal to L not just follows from this one. So L not is act, L L not is actually Hermitian. So one important thing is, uh, if you are looking at a state like this, if you have you know some some m number of these and some n number of these, and these two things are not equal, then what what you will find that there is always a mismatch. So so if the, if the levels are not not equal, uh, I mean, if you sum these two up and levels are not equal, then you see that this always gives you a zero at the end of the day, because you always have some extra creation operators or I mean, annihilation operators left over. And you can act say the uh, I mean, annihilation operators on the right or the creation operators on the left, and that'll give you zero. So the important lesson to learn from this part is that when you are looking at, at the uh, inner product of, of states, uh, then you you don't uh, so so you have to so these are only non-zero for states between the same um, I mean in the same level. I'm sorry, somebody is is probably unmuted. If you could uh, just mute yourself because I hear some feedback. Thank you. All right. So uh, now, yeah, as I said here, uh, you know states at two different levels have uh, M0 in a product. This is essentially an indication of the fact that the eigenspaces of a Hermitian operator, in this case, uh, L0, with different Dagger values are actually orthogonal, okay? Uh, and hermeticity also forces H to be real. And uh, you know this we did did for the holomorphic sector. You can also do it for the anti-holomorphic sector. And then the, there's a I mean Verma module V bar, which is which is labeled by C bar and H bar, and the uh, Hilbert space is actually a sum of of these uh, I mean these two V and V uh, I mean V and V bar. Okay. Now, the point that I wanted to stress, and this is something that we saw last time around, is that depending on the values of C and H, uh, the, the Verma module can have states with negative or even zero norm. So for uh, uh, unitary theories, we need to remove all uh, I mean, negative norm states. And uh, so last time around, we saw a little bit of this. And uh, let me try, try, to, uh, try to say that once more. Okay, so now our uh, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to be looking at things with zero norm. Okay, so uh, so it may happen, as I write here, uh, that the representation of the Virasoro algebra, uh, uh, I mean, uh, comprising of all the states, is act actually reducible. This means, what does this mean? This means there's a subspace. <coughs> which is a fully fledged representation of the algebra itself. So the states of the sub subspace or sub module, if you wish, uh, this would transform, uh, I mean, under themselves, under any, uh, I mean, uh, conformal transformation. So, you know, it, you, you, you are restricted to the subspace, if you wish. Now, such a sub module is also going to be generated by a highest weight weight vector. Uh, you know, uh, this is this we 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 call this uh, this chi. So all these LNs acting on on chi will be equal to zero. Okay. Remember that this 
this state also has to be derived. So in the whole Hilbert space, in, I mean, in the whole, whole particular Verma module, there is obviously one highest weight state and every other state is sort of, I mean, the descendant of that state. So, so if you are to have a Verma module that is reducible, they, this state, state, state chi uh, has to also be of the form, which is the descendant of this highest weight state H. So this brings you to, to the weird, uh, I mean, weird sort of uh, uh, fact that, that uh, chi, we will see the equivalent notation in terms of fields is that this is a primary as well as a secondary. Okay, so so this this is uh, you know this particular equation is true. This one is also true. Okay. Um, so now what what we are saying? Uh, so what we so any state which is annihilated by all ends. All, all LNs except for, for this highest weight state H is called a null vector or a singular vector, okay? Such states generate, as I was saying, uh, their own Verma module, now V of chi, and this particular V of chi is going to be included in this uh, I mean, original Verma module, VCH, okay? Singular Verma, I mean, singular vectors will be orthogonal to the whole, uh, I mean, Verma module itself. Now let's let's see that. So for that, you know, we, what we are doing is we take a state. We take a state. Let's let's just say we take a state psi, which is l minus n one dot dot l minus m. Uh, sorry, n minus n m, acting on H, and we take this. I mean, inner product of chi with psi. So that's 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 what we have done here. So uh, as as I as I indicate, so this particular thing is what we want to do. Now we have just flipped this 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 around. This is a, a, a number, so I can take this. I mean, just sorry, uh, where did I go? So I, I I can flip this around such that these these guys now act act on a, a chi star. Okay. So what, what, what has happened is that, so this, this is going to be equal to, I mean, this is obviously going to be equal to zero because uh, of, of the fact that uh, all of LNs acting on, on, uh, on, on chi has to be equal to zero, okay? So we have just shown that if you take any particular vector in this particular, I mean, in this uh, uh, I mean, Burma module, we would be able to show that chi with, with that vector, the I mean, inner product of that is equal to zero. This, I mean, for, for example, in particular, if you're looking at chi with itself, the norm of this is also going to be zero. And this particular thing also extends to all the descendants of chi. So as I said earlier, uh, through the field operator sort of map, the null state chi is associated with the null field which at the same time is primary because all these LNs acting on, on, on chi is equal to zero and secondary because it's derived from this, I mean, primary field phi of H, okay? So that was that. So uh, now what, what you can do is if you have a Verma module, which contains a one or more singular vectors, from that you can const uh, construct an irreducible one uh, by, by, I mean, irreducible representation of the uh, uh, Virasoro algebra by, I mean, quotienting out with the null sub, sub module. What does that mean? So you have these states. Uh, so, uh, so you have these states which, which have zero norm. So if you have any state, uh, okay, let me try and write this down somewhere. So if you have, have some state, you know, uh, psi, psi one, and that is equal to psi plus chi. We are we are act actually going to identify it. We are we are going to identify psi with. Uh, yeah. So we are going to I mean identify psi one with psi. So any two states that only differ by a state of zero norm are going to be identified. If we do this, we are essentially going. To, I mean this operation is is essentially equivalent to 
uh, quotienting out this null null swap module out of uh, VCH. Okay, sir. Uh, yes. So this essentially means that we are uh, removing uh, the null states and their descendants, right? That's uh, right. Yes. Yes. Right. Okay. So we will we will see that these null states are are actually also I mean useful. This is what I want to do in the I mean class class today. Uh, but you know if you want to get irreducible representations, this is what you do. Okay. All right. Now we we have addressed the uh, I mean question of how to construct irreducible representations. Now let's try to understand how we can get a hold of, uh, uh, I mean, unitarity of these representations. A representation of the Virasoro algebra is going to be called a unitary representation if it does not contain any states of negative norm. Okay. Oops, sorry. What did I just do? Trying to make this a little smaller, but unfortunately, okay. All right, so, uh, right. And uh, so now uh, what we will, what will happen is that this restriction of unitarity is going to actually impose some, uh, uh, I mean, uh, restrictions on the values of C and H. Let's, let's do that in a simple way as we did last time around. Let's look at the norm of the state L minus N acting on H. From there, we, we can clearly see that, you know, let's, if we take H and H, I mean, the uh, inner product of H is the norm of the, this, this to be equal to one, for example, then we see that you, you have, you know, these are, you, th these ends can, can go on and on, right? So you, you, you can create more and more and more states. So as you see, there is an n cube which sits here. So as n grows larger, this particular c n cube by 12 is the one that is going to sort of, I mean, dominate the norm of this state. So if c is less than zero, this is going to turn, I mean, this norm is going to turn negative for high enough values of n. So that means that we cannot have, so, so remember that, you know, even if you have one uh, negative norm state in, in your theory, this is not, not unitary anymore. So it means that C has to, C less than zero is something that is ruled out by, I mean, if you are to impose unitarity, then C less than zero is ruled out, okay? So that's point one. And the second thing that you see is if N is equal to one, this term just drops and you're left with this and that's twice H and twice H times say one. So this also requires you to have the weights. I mean, so negative weights are also ruled out. So, so this is what, what we found. So C and H have to be more, more than zero. So these, these are what you'll call unitary bounds. Now, uh, now uh, remember that we, we we did a simple-minded sort of I mean analysis out here where we looked at just one state, right? So, but if you are at level n, uh, there are several such states, right? And instead of looking at the norm of of individual states, what you want to do is you want to look at the gram gram matrix of the norm of all the states. And you want to try and uh, I mean, figure out what to do from there. Okay, so uh, let's let's do that. And for that, what we did is is we wrote wrote this down. So let me let me not go go through this detail. And let me just straight away go go to the example. So we we saw. So what we are going to be doing is we are going to be looking at this this matrix of I mean inner products of these states at some some uh, I mean some level n. So you, you remember that the fact that, you know, if you have two states, which are not of the same, same level, then the, the I mean, inner product of them will be equal to zero. So this, uh, you know, this huge matrix of all states is actually broken un, up into sub matrices, uh, which each of these are, are, are going to be MK, if you wish, okay? So we are going to look at MK, each of them. 
So for the first one, this is just simple, and we 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 took took H H just to be one. Uh, so for M one, uh, what you have is L. Uh, so L minus one of H. The norm of this gives you two H, and that's simply the fact that this has to be. Uh, so so this has to be. Uh, I mean, greater than zero means that H is uh, greater than zero. This is something we just saw, not something new. Now let's look at uh, level two. So level two, you have two states. So the two states that you have are L minus two on H and L minus one squared on H. So you want, you, so this you will have a two cross two um, matrix. The, so the, I mean, inner product will, will, will be of that. So you have this guy and this guy as your I mean, diagonal entries, and you also have these as, as your off diagonal entries. So once you sort of sit down and look at, I mean, look at what, what, what the Averroes of algebra is, it's very clear that this is going to take a form, which I write down here, okay? Now that's, that's good. Now, what do we have to do? Now we have to make sure that the, uh, so we, we, we'll have to make sure that, uh, so we, we have to find the zeros of this, if you wish. So what are the roots of, of, of this? And so uh, the roots of this, so we, we can find out what, what the determinant is. So the determinant of this gives you some, some, uh, some expression like this. The roots of determinant of m equal to zero are going to give you uh, these three roots, h11 equal to zero, h12 and h21 as, as these, these two numbers, okay? So you can write, rewrite the determinant in a form like this. And also, uh, so you, you will also get that the sum of eigenvalues is equal to the trace, okay? Now, uh, the representations are, are going to be non-unitary uh, whenever either the determinant or the trace of this thing, uh, I mean, flips a sign. So we already know something. We, we, we already know that if you are in this, this sort of, uh, I mean, in the first, first quadrant, then you are fine. Now, what we are seeing is that we are, we are also going to get regions of the fir first, first quadrant which will be ruled out, okay? So when these things are, uh, I mean, flip a sign, when, when, when the determinant or the trace of M, M2, for example, is, is negative, we, we know that those representations are going to be non-unitary representations. So on, on top of being in just this, this coordinate, you'll have more and more things which are being ruled out. For example, I drew out here. So if you draw this first one, this is, this is going to be some, something like this and it, things inside it will be ruled out, okay? So this is only for level two. You can go on trying to do this for higher and high, I mean, higher and higher levels and you are going to get more and more things which are ruled out, okay? So you, there is a sort of uh, a generic uh, formula for, for, for the determinant. This is due to, uh, uh, due to cuts and the determinant takes a form like this. And let me just show you, uh, show you a, a picture from the big, uh, big yellow book, which I just I mean, took a photo of and pasted here. So, so you know, so this, this part is, is ruled out at the first level. Uh, this part is ruled out at the second level. And, and, and of course, as you can, can understand, the fir first level thing will also be here. So, and you go on doing this, right? So you get more and more part of this fir first quadrant being ruled out. Remember that this is for uh, central charge C uh, less than one, okay? Uh, for C, more than one, we will see in a minute that there are, there are more, uh, you know, you, you would be able to get uh, a, a unitary representations more easily. So this Scott's determinant at level N uh, is, is something that looks like this, uh, where, where we, we, we explicitly did for you the, the example of the first, I mean, of the second level. But these uh, roots or roots can, uh, are, I mean, take this form, okay? So H, H, P, Q is of a form like this. And, and you know, this, uh, whatever this M is, M, M, M has some, some form like this, okay? Now, uh, you can show that, you know, for C, which is more than one, 
and h <laughs> greater than or equal to zero, there are actually no, no, I mean, no zeros. And all the eigenvalues of this are positive and hence uh, unitary representations of this, I mean, can exist. For c equal to one, uh, so the de uh, determinant of mn is zero when h is equal to n squared by four. So these are reasonably straightforward and uh, simple. So what what is, uh, yeah, so I think I should mention uh, one more little thing. Let me see if I remember that right. Just give me a sec. I think I missed saying something here. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I should say that, that you know, when, when you have something with a zero eigenvalue, the number of linearly independent eigenvectors of the same M is given by this roots of the equation uh, yeah, determinant of M equal to zero, okay? This gives you the, yeah, so this, this essentially uh, is something that I should have mentioned a little bit more, but I guess that that should be reasonably clear to you guys. So okay, so so uh, so that's that's what, and uh, the situation is that when you when you are looking at this region of c being uh, less than one, this uh, this is much more more involved as as we were just seeing. So it can be shown. Uh, I'm not not going to go into these details, um, but it can be shown that all points that that do not lie on 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 these these curves HPQ. Uh, where, uh, yeah, I mean, determinant of MN is equal to zero, these are no, non-unitary. And it, it, I mean, you can also show that, you know, if you, uh, that, that uh, negative norm states can only, uh, yeah, I mean, occur for, uh, I mean, certain, sorry, negative uh, norm states uh, are only absent, I'm sorry. So rectify this are only absent for certain intersection points of these I mean these these curves. So the summary is the following. The summary is that if you have C less than one and H greater than equal to zero, there are actually a discrete set of points uh, where unitary representations are not excluded. And these occur at these uh, special values of the central charge. And for, for them, this AHHPQ, if you wish, takes this form, okay? So I mean, what what we did is I just showed you the things for uh, for the fir first level, and I'm just asking you you to, yeah, this this is something that you can do. Uh, I mean, in more uh, generality, but we won't we would not have have time to actually go through this whole thing here. But it's very important to for you to remember that when we are in the window of central charge between zero and one, there exists this series which is going to be called the uh, um, minimal models. These, these are a discrete set and these only occur for these particular central, uh, uh, central charges and the weights, these high, the, the weight, weights of the primary fields of those CFTs are explicitly just, uh, I mean, uh, given by these numbers. So for example, so, so, you know, this gives, this fixes for you what these CFTs are. You can put some values of, of M in and you, you, will, you will be able to get what, what the CFTs are. In the sense, you'll get the central charge of these CFTs and you'll get 
the weights uh, corresponding to the primary fields of these CFTs. This will be a finite number. And from, from then, uh, so that, that essentially means that you know everything about this CFT from there, okay? Let's look at an example. When you are looking at M equal to three, then you, know, you can just put M equal to three here, then you'll find that C is equal to half. This particular thing is called the Ising CFT. And this actually represents the <laughs> critical point of the second order phase transition of the Ising model. Uh, yeah, you can put these things back out here and you would be able to see that the <coughs> primaries are, are, are going to be labeled by, by uh, you know, you, you'll just have three of these things you'll have I mean, you'll have the identity field, you'll have something which with, with, with weight half and you'll have something with weight one sixth, okay? So that's, uh, that's the example of the uh, critical, I mean, Ising CFT. You can, uh, for M equal to four, this is what is called the, I mean, tricriticalizing model here, you, uh, you, you'll see you have states one, two, uh, three, four, five of them. Five, yes, I guess five. Uh, yes. Right. Six of them, is it? Yes. So there are these six guys uh, and this sort of uh, repeats again. It just flip, I mean, flips around. So now what I want, want to stress is that, you know, here all, all that we are doing is we are, not, we are not discussing any Lagrangian or something like that. And we are, we're not discussing explicit, I mean, well, at the end, I just showed you some, some examples, but except for that, we're not discussing concrete realizations of a CFT, which all we are doing is using the power of symmetry to get to this. Second thing that I <coughs> want to stress is if you are looking at, I mean, stack, stack mech like, like applications, you can actually remove this, uh, I mean, unitality uh, thing. And this leads to a sort of more uh, I mean, general uh, discrete set. And so where your, uh, some of your, uh, I mean, ne negative norm things will also be allowed. So there you are, you are, you're going to get, uh, you know, this, this set. So this is, uh, this is the, I mean, this is the sort of set of all minimal models, not necessarily unitary. Uh, so C, I mean, for example, there is one, one guy where C is equal to minus 22 by five. This is something called the Yang Li singularity. This is uh, useful in, in, uh, in, 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 in sort of I mean, stat pack models when, when you're looking at phase transitions and, and so on there's uh, something which, which is uh, useful. All right, so this was, uh, this was a, a sort of brief run through of uh, these, uh, I mean, minimal models. We can actually spend a long, long time discussing these things, but unfortunately our course is just so long that we would not be able to get everything done. It's a very vast subject. So um, what I want to do for, for the next few minutes is that I wanted to give you an idea of how sort of these null, uh, null states, what are they useful for and so on, and give you, a, I mean, a better idea of what's, what's happening. So far, uh, do you have any questions? If you want to ask, this might be a good time. Sir, are the are all the minimal models uh, physically realized? Are all the physical uh, are all the minimal models physically realized? Yeah, they they would belong to some sort of um, yeah. This is a question that I'm not in. Well, I I think so. Yes, I would think so. I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't know of. Well, it, it may be that we, we are not, not able to identify something. Um, I don't, 
I mean, you know, if you take M, M to be larger and larger and larger, then I, you might be getting closer and closer to one. I'm not sure it will be, uh, all of those things would be very uh, clearly realized, but at least uh, uh, the discrete series of things that, 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 uh, that are, you know, if you do not take M, M, M to be that large, uh, then I think, See, if you take M uh, to be large and I mean, you know, uh, very large, you'll you, you sort of hit C equal to one, right? So, uh, so, I mean, you know, if you exclude those, if you take finite sort of values of M, then I think, at, I mean, at least a large number of them are, I mean, I, I mean, are, are, I mean, are going to be, uh, I mean, are going to be sort of, I mean, sort of physically, uh, uh, I mean, they, they're, they're, they're going to be, uh, they're going to uh, correspond to some, some system, as I told you, there's the Ising model, there's the tri tricritical Ising model, there's something called the Potts model, so on and so forth. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure all of them are, okay? okay. So yeah, so this is a series, as, as you can see, uh, there will, I mean, as, as you go near, near one, there, I mean, these are, I mean, are going to bunch up, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely near, near the end, I, I don't know if that is the case, but there are significant number of them which are, are, are actually realized. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, okay, let's, let's talk about, um, uh, you know, how these null states are useful for us. So let's look at, look at null states at level two. Uh, what are we going to do? Uh, so let's let's try and figure this out. Okay. So a general state at, uh, at 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 level two is going to be given by uh, I mean linear combination like this, right? Where this eta is some 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 number which is going to depend on c and h. So what we want? Uh, well, uh, so now uh, I'm sorry. So c. Okay. Let let me restate that. A general state at level two is given by, uh, I mean, linear combination of L minus two and L minus one squared acting on this highest weight state, where this number, I mean, could be any sort of constant number. Now we want to figure out what is this uh, in terms of C and H when the state becomes null. Okay. Uh, so this is a null state at level two, okay? So a null state at level two will be any, so any ln, so what, what do you have? You have any ln acting on chi equal to zero. Now, uh, suppose you have uh, L3, so, so this is for all n, right? So all n, I mean, more, more than zero. Suppose you have L3 acting on chi. So L3 acting on chi is just what? This is L3 acting on L minus two plus eta L minus one squared acting on H. Now you see what is going to happen all the time is that these guys, so when you take L3 through this, uh, you are always going to be left over with some, so, so, you know, so this is going to turn into L minus two L three, plus there is, there is going to be, uh, so the five, whatever, L one, plus, plus others, this is, this is going to act on H. So you can see that you know if you if you have if you have some things that that are not of the same uh, same same level, uh, so if this is not L two, then you're always going to be left left over with some I mean additional sort of I mean annihilation operators, right? And this is going to act on H and give you uh, I mean give you that this is I mean. If, equal to this is this is equal to zero just just automatically it's not going to impose any sort of constraints on on your state 
So what I want to say is if you are at a level, if you are looking at a null state at level N, the only, uh, only non-trivial uh, conditions uh, you are going to get from uh, acting with LN, LN at, you know, chi N, if you wish, is equal to zero. So this is not a good, good way to try this. So, okay, so what I mean is for level, level two, the only things that are going to give you, uh, you know, non-trivial, uh, non-trivial sort of conditions on chi will be L2 and L1. Likewise, if you had a state at level four, the only things that are going to give you, non, I mean, non-trivial non -trivial conditions are L4, L3, and L1. L, L4, L3, L2, and L1. Yeah, anything higher than N equal to four uh, will, will give you the thing trivial, okay? So, uh, I mean, it may, may be a good exercise for you guys to look at say <laughs> level three and sort of figure this out, but uh, that's, that's what this is, okay? Is this uh, clear to everybody? Okay, it seems that it is. So the point now is you want to act L1 on the state equal to zero and L, L, L2, on, uh, L, L2 on the state and try and uh, you know, find out what this eta is, for example. So L1 acting on chi, uh, you do the algebra and what you get so let's let's do this. So this is uh, this is this. So the first one again gives you L minus one on H, and the second one gives you some L L naughts. All right. So then what you get is that your eta. Uh, so this has to be this first one is. Uh, Yeah, so, so what you get at the end of the day is that you are, you are going to get something like, like this, okay. And uh, so what you find is that eta has to be, this has to, I mean, be equal to zero. So uh, what you get is, uh, you know, L3. Uh, so eta has to be three by two into two H plus one. So this is something that you just get from your L1, I mean L1 condition. Now you can look at the L, I mean L2 condition, and the I mean L2 condition gives you a value of cent, the central charge C. Okay. So what what is the what what have we learned? So we have learned that if a theory uh, has a central charge which which is of this form then there is at level two, a null state, which is of this form, okay? So let's just quickly, uh, I mean, cross check what, what happens for the series that, that we have been looking at. So this, uh, I mean, minimal series. So, so, so you know, let's uh, take you back to slides and show you this, uh, you know, uh, this MN, uh, H PQ of M, and uh, and maybe I didn't want to show you this. Yeah, so I wanted to show you this one, I guess. Yeah, so there are several ways of trying trying to write write this down. But if you if you plug this in now, so what you're going to get is that if you plug in uh, h, I mean two one of m, then the form that you're going to get is h is of the form m squared my m plus two squared minus one by four M plus M plus one. If you solve this for M, then M will be uh, given by, a f you know, three by four H minus one. And then you, you know what uh, the central charge is in terms of M. So you plug this back. And then what you find is that the central charge is given by twice H uh, five minus eight H divided by twice H plus one. Notice that this value of C and this uh, value of C are one and the same. So what have we learned? We have learned that if you are looking at the, 
I mean, minimal models, uh, then you are going to find a, a sort of null state at, I mean, level two for these, I mean, this, this, this sort of discrete set, okay? I hope this last bit is clear. First, we find found out what the uh, what the form of uh, uh, you know state at uh, uh, null state at level two would be. Uh, so this you know for us, uh, I mean for uh, CFT which has a central charge of this form, the null state has a form like this, and then we proceeded to show that your, uh, I mean, if you're looking at minimal models and if you look, looked at uh, the second, uh, second level and plug things in, then the central charge that you're going to get is at, I mean, actually identical to this. So the discrete series that we have mentioned will always have this null state at this level too. Very good. Now, to finally figure out what we can do with null states and why it is useful, let's try to uh, look at what, uh, you know, what, what, I mean, descendant fields and what, what their, I mean, correlation functions are, okay? So this is something that, that we have done before. So what we, what we want to do is we want to look at the, ex, some, some, uh, the, uh, I mean, uh, expansion of uh, T of Z. And uh, so that, that essentially means that you can write down these, I mean, operators LN uh, in a form by this uh, integral, okay? So this is something that we did earlier. Now the point essentially is that we want to figure out what uh, correlation functions of, I mean, some, some uh, descendant field. So we have this particular uh, descendant field and we want to figure out what the uh, endpoint function of this with these phi's, which are all primary fields are, okay? So let's try and do this. Uh, so what, what do we do? If we do this, then this is equivalent to, as I just wrote down out here, trying to find this particular but I mean, particular I mean, sort of contour integral, where you are now looking at, uh, you know, you have inserted a uh, tz phi omega with, with with the rest of the phi's. Okay. As we have done before, you can you can transfer this. Uh, I mean, this onto all the rest of the fields. So instead of t acting on phi here you could make t act on all of the phi i's here. So now this sort of, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean the uh, contour that you have uh, deforms into individual ones where, where, where the, I mean, t of z uh, is, is actually uh, close to phi i or phi i's. Now you use the OP of tz with the phi i's to get a form like this. And then uh, you, so this is around each of these, so the, this sort of uh, contour circles around each of the, these, these points. So what you have is that you have this expression. So, so, so these are, as you remember, primary fields. So these are, are going to be, so the first term is just the weight. The second one is, as you know, the translations of these guys. So uh, what do you get? So you get this expression and remember that you also have to do, I mean, perform this particular, particular integral as well. So the first one is a second order pole that you have out here. So you need to differentiate this function once. So that is what, what gives you this. And the second one is just straightforwardly, it's, it's just in the uh, order one pole. So that uh, Z is going to be replaced by, uh, Z is going to be replaced by, no. well, not, not here, but here uh, your, I mean, Z is going to be replaced by this, uh, 
I mean, omega i that you have out here. So what have we got? You have got that the expression that the endpoint function of a secondary field or a, a, a descendant with n number of primaries boils down to an expression of this particular operator acting on now the endpoint function of n plus, I mean, the correlation function of n plus one primaries, okay? So this, this is what this particular statement out here says. So let me maybe box this up or something. That this guy, uh, so it means that if you have uh, correlation functions for descendant fields, these can be uh, computed from correlation functions of the corresponding primary fields, okay? So this is a powerful statement and uh, we, we shall immediately see how to use this in what we, we have been trying to, uh, trying to discuss. Is, is this okay? This is, this is an important thing, okay? So you see that uh, any sort of, uh, you know, uh, sort of endpoint function of any field that you can write down in your theory can now be, uh, can now be re-expressed in terms of endpoint functions of primary fields, okay? Very good. So now, uh, so let's, let's just try and link up this first part of the lecture to the next, this last, last part of it. Now, what have we seen uh, with these null fields or, or these null states? So the null states are actually orthogonal to the whole of, uh, of our module, right? And this in the field theory language, uh, in, in this field language, not field theory language, just, uh, just translates to the statement that it's uh, correlation function with a string of fields, say, you know, phi, phi one of Z one to phi n of Z n, is going to be equal to zero. So if this field is uh, chi of z and you have this string of uh, uh, fields out here, then chi of z with phi one, phi two, phi, um, dot dot phi n, that has to be equal to zero, okay? Now let's do this for our null state at level two. So what is this? So we have this first, this, this particular operator and we have, so now we know that if you were to uh, look at uh, this, this uh, you know, I mean, null state and, and the correlation function of the null state with N of the primaries phi i's, then this can be equivalently just written down as L2 I mean, this, this, this operator acting on all of these fields, which are now primary fields, okay? So 4.62 just says that. Uh, the next step is a little tricky. So you have to just remember that I have replaced this, the first one, this L minus two with our usual thing that we just, uh, I mean, uh, derived in, on, on the last page. But I have not done something like that with the L minus one squared. Uh, this is simply, I mean, simply uh, because if you just translate, uh, you know, L minus one on phi, that is just, I mean, I mean the translation. So del, I mean, del omega of phi. So L minus one just acts as this guy. So what you have is a particular differential equation that looks like this, okay? So this is a, a differential equation. That, that we have. Um, okay, so we can work this out, for example, for the two point functions and the three point functions, you can uh, very I mean, very easily check that if you do it for the two point function, it doesn't really give you anything. But suppose we're doing it for the three point function. Okay, so we have three fields, phi, phi one and phi two. This satisfies a differential equation. Let's call this, uh, uh oh, let's call this 4.6. Okay, let's let's not, not do this now because there are other numbered equations. So this 
particular equation, let's call this 4.62a. So now there is this uh, for the uh, two point function, this does not yield, yield anything at all. But you remember the three point function, right? If you have the three point function of these three fields, one is phi, one is phi one, and one is phi two, then this is going to be, you know, a, a C of phi, phi one, phi two into this form, right? These are three primary fields of weight H h1 and h2 so you know know that this is the form so plug this form back into this equation okay and uh, and let's 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 do this so so n equal to i mean n is equal to 1 to 3 now and if you do this uh, i mean if you if you do this then what you're going to get this is an exercise that we will not do but you are going to get some some sort of bounds on what h is. so there is there is going to be a, a sort of uh, equation that that constrains what h h1 and h h2 i mean could could be so you can actually you know get this out of so our uh, equation uh, 4.62b when you put this three point function into that then you are going to get that you know these weights are going to be related to each other. H two is going to be of this form. Okay, H two is <coughs> can be expressed in terms of H and H one. Does not seem to be very illuminating, but um, let's just go ahead. Okay, so. Now, what we do is we take 4.63. So you see there is H2, there's H and there's H1, okay? So there are these three fields, H, so phi, phi one and phi two with H, weights H, H1 and H2. What are we going to do? We are going to take H to be the uh, H, one two so this is this is going to be so if so we are looking at what we're looking at a null field right so this is what 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 we are trying to do this phi uh, i mean this 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 guy here is something that is um, associated with a null vector right so and we saw that this null vector was something which is h uh, to one so what what you can do is you can plug this in okay Let's say that H is equal to H21 and H1 is H, I mean, PQ of M. So what, so, so what is this H PQ of M? This, this sort of goes back to the equations that, that we were trying to uh, write down. So this is H PQ of M. And we have, uh, we, we have H as H21, like, like we had before. So, that means that there are going to be, so you would be able to restrict. So if you were given three fields, phi, phi one, and phi two, now phi has weight H21, phi one has weight HPQ, then by the argument that we had last time around, H2 is actually fixed. And if you do the math, if you can just plug these things in, you'll find that there are two solutions for H2, which actually give you H uh, P minus one Q or H P plus one Q. So what is happening? You take a null state, right? And you take a field which, which has weight, uh, I mean, which is, uh, given by the expressions that, that, that I showed you before. So these are fields of the minimal model. So you, 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 you take these two, and then what you find is that this is restricted in the sense that the, this, uh, the outcome of this, so the fields that, that can give you non-trivial three-point functions from this can only have 
weights of certain values okay so this c uh, yeah so so there are only two values of you know phi 2 weights phi 2 which give you a non trivial three point function otherwise any other three point function will be actually equal to zero so this sort of truncates your algebra if you wish so if you wish you know you 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 can write this like like this so what what is this so what is this so so you know if you try to find the ope of phi 2 with some other primary field phi pq <coughs> sorry something weird has happened here then this this is going to be restricted because of the fact that these three point functions are going to be non zero only when these are of uh, you know so so these three point functions are only going to be non zero if you have certain fields out there and not all of them okay so this you know at first first sight this this may may be a little hard to try try and understand but what is happening is uh you know if you if you if you wish fuse this uh field uh, this 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 particular family of phi phi 2 1 with this one of phi pq so you can only get things from either of these i mean these two families it just means that the ope of this uh <coughs> field with with another primary field is restricted to a certain form okay uh all i said was true for uh, the level 2 states you can do this for i mean higher level states i'll not not uh, you know try and give you more of this because i think this is already a little involved but for example you can uh, look at again your ising cft and then you can figure out this so i i try i i'll keep this for you as an exercise so you can sort of try to uh, i'm try to figure out what the i mean what these uh, yeah yeah fusion rules are so let's let's say that this is homework so uh, yeah just just i mean cross check this okay so i I'll, i'll i'll upload this again uh so there's something else but i'll 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 drop that for the moment so what so let me just reiterate uh what we saw in uh, these 2 minutes and then i'll be done because i think this may have been a little heavy so uh we first said that you can uh so there can be these uh, sort of null states so if your i mean verma module has some some null states uh then they can lead to sort of interesting uh, i mean features that we saw at the end so what are these uh, so so we at the end of the lecture so so uh, i i first gave you a, you know a run through of what these sort of discrete series was but but let me try and and uh, i mean emphasize the things at the end once more so if you are looking at a null state at level 2 you can find out what the explicit form of this null state is by demanding that uh, uh you know it it vanishes under the action of l1 and l2 this fixes what this sort of un, unknown i mean you know at, at first undetermined i mean coefficient in front of l minus 1 squared is and it can also fix for example what the central charge is so in a sense what we are saying is that if your central charge is of a form like this then your theory is always going to have a null state at uh, i mean at your second level then we briefly saw that this this particular expression for the central charge is is in 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 uh, keeping with the expressions that we had for i mean the minimal minimum model series so for this what we what we had to do is we had to take this i mean sort of general form of h h pq 
and a plugin that p is equal to two and q is equal to one. And then we solved and we saw that we came, came to the same uh, you know, uh, form of the central charge here and here. So this uh, points to the fact that this minimal series always will have this, uh, you know, null states at uh, level two. You can find out, you know, that there, there will be further and further null states at, I mean, higher and higher, uh, higher, and higher levels, but that's fine. Uh, after that, I, I quickly showed you that, you know, when you're looking to, uh, look at uh, when, when you're looking at you know endpoint functions of some uh, descendant fields these can actually be got from endpoint functions of primary fields and by acting with some i mean operators on, on them so once you know the endpoint functions of primary fields you can get endpoint functions of uh, a, a, i mean descendant fields if you wish now we try to combine these two now, uh, so now what we want to do is we wanted to, to uh, so we have this descendant field, which is, an, I mean, null field, right? So now, uh, so we, we tried to, uh, I mean, exp I mean, we tried to use equation 4.61 to figure out what, uh, what sort of equation, what sort of, uh, I mean, differential equation we would get if we are looking at, uh, you know, uh, at, at endpoint functions of uh, primary fields with, with, with say one, I mean, null field in the game. So uh, the, the sort of defining feature of having some endpoint function of, uh, uh, I mean, null field with N minus one primary fields is that this is goal always going to be zero. This is basically the translation of the fact that the null, null field is orthogonal to the whole, I mean, whole of the Verma module. So that means that, you know, this operator acting on, on this endpoint, I mean, endpoint function is going to give you zero, all right? Now we know that uh, the, uh, so this, this, is, this, is, uh, this is going to be a, particular form of our, uh, I mean, I mean, of our say, uh, differential equation. And what, what we can do is we can, we can try to uh, test this out by looking at three-point functions. So we know the explicit form of three-point functions for three primary fields. We call those primary fields phi, phi one, and phi two. If we do that, then we can plug in the form of this, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, three-point function into this uh, this particular differential equation 4.62. And if we do that, what we will find is that these the primary fields which had weights h h1 and h2 these weights are going to be related to each other. That would mean that due to the fact that you have a null field in your game, what we have established is that only you know, certain fields can give you non-trivial three-point functions. The rest of those, uh, I mean, rest of those three-point functions where these H's are not related by 4.63 are going to be excluded. Those are going to, uh, those, those will not be, those will not be there, okay? So this, uh, I mean, you can try to push this uh, further and see what, so, so you know what the forms of, of uh, you know, so if there is a field phi, phi one, and that belongs to this, uh, I mean, minimal model, you know what the form of the, I mean, you, you, you have an expression for the weight of the field in terms of, you know, P and Q. So I, I urge you to go back and try and do this. And we also know that this field phi has, has a certain weight H uh, to one. So it means that phi two, can only have a particular weight. So if, if you plug these two in, 
you'll find that the only values of the weights that the uh, you know field phi two can have is h uh, p minus one q or h p plus one q. So that means when you take OPEs of this field phi uh, you know phi two one with phi p q, this this OP is only going to be restricted. Uh, I mean, to these families, which which have weights, uh, you know, H p plus one q or H p minus one q. So this four point six four is what is called the the fusion rule of, uh, I mean, conformal families in a unitary a unitary a minimal model. So we were doing all of this for just just the uh, you know uh, null state at level two. This can obviously be uh, I mean generalized to higher uh, higher level null states, and I give you an expression here for for that. Uh, I mean as long as you get the picture of what we are trying to do, the explicit expression for for this is not not going to be that important. But I hope the idea at, of at least what we are trying to do has got through. Okay. Uh, I, I understand this was a little little fast, and I understand these are things that you might be seeing for the first time. Um, but yeah, so just try and go through this. I'll up, upload the notes as soon as I can. I'm uh, doing an I mean amalgamation of uh, the books by I mean uh, Ralph Blumenhagen and Lotion and and our big fat CFP book. Uh, mainly from here, then I will sort of, you know, try and take things from here and there and everywhere as well. But uh, for this, this part, yeah, the, the, these are the two books that you should be seeing. And uh, uh, the big fat book has lots and lots of more details on minimal models, which unfortunately we would not be able to do. I would have loved to be, uh, do it a bit more, but um, yeah, so that's, that's where we stand. So we will we will say a little bit more about um, you know this next time around a, a few few more features, and then <clears throat> we'll move off the plane and on to uh, I mean on to uh, I mean other things. I've I've not yet decided if I want to do an application first or if I want to go to the I mean put uh, I mean it, T2 or something like that after this. So we will, we will see what, what to do about that. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, modular invariance is something that I want to, uh, I mean, discuss in some, some detail. So that will be the a large part, a large chunk of the rest of the course. But I'm uh, trying to debate whether to give you guys a little bit of uh, string theory first and see an application of CFT uh, where it arises in string theory before going on to do that. Do you guys have any uh, suggestions about uh, which one you want to see first? So I'm going to do modular invariance. And uh, that's uh, something that I'm going to do, but I also want to do some applications. And what I have in mind is I want to do string theory, a little bit of it. Um, in maybe two lectures or something like that. Do you do you you have a preference of what you want to see first? String theory. <laughs> okay, there's one 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 person who has said. So the rest of you don't don't really have any uh, preference this way or 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 another. Everybody is quiet. Sir. Yep. So what was the first book that you mentioned? The first book is uh, Ralph um, um, Blumenhagen and I mean, Erich Kloschen. So this, this would be on, on the website. Okay. So yeah, we are. So you will, you'll see that large swaths of what I did in the class uh, today are, are from there. I, I have a question. Yeah, please. So like I actually read from somewhere that uh, this bootstrap hypothesis for minimal models completely determine 
the mm-hmm. three point function coefficients mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that is consistent with this right you say that like some coefficients will be zero but only two of them at most will be non zero i was just wondering yeah yeah so so what what is what is going to happen is that you will you will see that if you are looking at you know i have not uh, done this uh, in much detail but i just yeah indicated this here so if you're looking for example you know at your i mean ising cft okay then then you have 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 these fields okay so there are these three fields basically so there is there there's the identity field there's something called a sigma field and there's something called an epsilon field so what happens is that you could see I and mean, you can see that these fusion rules actually just uh show you that these i mean these sort of and these, and these sort of families are are uh, you know if you if you take i mean you know uh, two of these then you are you are you're going going to get a third one which which is of of this form so it 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 just means that you know the three point functions could be between this this and this so if you have something which is c1 sigma sigma that is going to be i mean that is so that's something which is i mean which will be sort of I mean, allowed by the theory so you you could i mean at the end of the day you could have that something is still equal to i mean equal to zero but you you can't have it i mean you can't have it the other way around right so what i'm trying to say is that these particular these particular differential equations uh these dictate that uh you know only those uh 3.5 i mean you 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 could only have uh some three point functions if your fields are related through this particular this particular relation right okay. right yeah now it could be that you know that particular three point function even if those h h1 h2 h3 are related through 4.63 that has some c5 uh, i mean 5152 5, which is equal to 0 that is still fine yeah right right yeah but if you have to have this this particular c as non zero then 4.63 has to hold okay okay, okay. now now the the ne- next step is is uh, so so this is this this means what now remember that you know this phi was something that was uh, related to this level 2 null state right 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 so the level 2 null state is just h uh, h21 of m that is what we saw saw before yeah yeah and this one is i mean i mean arbitrary guy okay i mean so you are taking a minimal model which has some h uh, h pq of m right that's 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 what what the uh, so so the minimal model says that your particular weights have to be given by this formula of h p q of m right yeah right right and you also ha- have have been able to prove that there is a null state which is at uh, uh, level 2 for all of these guys yes now the se- now now this means that you take this null state which is your field phi okay you take this field phi phi 1 which is given by h uh, i mean h p q so now the only way that uh, this particular identity holds is if you have phi 2 being of of this this form okay right so yeah. that is what you know this 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 means that you you fuse if you wish this null field with i mean with an arbitrary field and and the only outcomes that you can get are either this or 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 this or a sum of these two okay so that's 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 all okay 
I, I, I know if you're seeing this for the first time, it'll be a little hard to sort of <laughs> internalize, internalize this all at once. But remember, what, what we are doing is we are exploiting <coughs> this expression of what the weights of, uh, uh, I mean, weights of primary fields of a, a minimal model would be, that's one. We are exploiting the fact that there is a null state at uh, level two. We are also exploiting the fact that if you take the three point function uh, of three fields, one of which is the null state, one of which is this general uh, primary field of phi uh, PQ and one, 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 uh, one an arbitrary field of some, some, some phi, then the, the symmetries, the fact that this particular null state has to be orthogonal to the whole of the whole of the Verma module dictates that your, your uh, weights of these guys have to be, I mean, have, have, they, they have to be related in a certain way. That's, that's, that's the argument basically. So if you take three fields, I mean, from, from what, what you had, uh, from, from what you learned before, you could have uh, uh, taken any three sort of uh, 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 fields, right? I mean, any three primary yeah, fields and right, you, right. You, you will get something which is not non-zero at the end of the day. Now we are saying that one, if one of these is, act, I mean, is actually a null field, then you are you you have more restrictions in your game, and you you cannot choose things. I mean, arbitrarily. It it happened for the two point function. Remember that if if two fields didn't have the same weight, it would just just be zero. Right, right. Similarly, here if you do not have have these these three of the same same weight, then it has to be equal to zero. Of 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 these, not 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 the same weight, but these related in a certain way. Then, yeah, I mean, then these things have to be zero, basically. So that's that's what the outcome of this particular whole analysis is. It just shows you the fact that you know, just because you have these null fields, you can get more things. So you 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 can pin things down even more. So you're using symmetries again. You're using uh, symmetries to constrain your system more and more. Okay. So it's a lot of words and, and <laughs> I should stop now. It's almost an hour and a half, but so I urge you to, yeah, yeah. This just gives the, uh, gives restriction on the OP between uh, 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 null uh, field and uh, some other field, right? That's right, yes. Okay. So th this is how you, you are, you're, you're going to fuse, I mean, fuse two fields basically. So this, this particular null field, as, as you saw, is going to be still, I mean, still there, right? So, your your, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, the uh, spectrum of fields of, of your, I mean, of your uh, the minimal model will have these null fields in them as well, right? So that's 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 the thing. So can you please uh, go to equation? 4.60. Sure. 4.60. Yes. So, uh, sir, I mean, uh, the LN, uh, the way we had defined the uh, LN modes. Yes. The expansion of uh, TZ uh, contained uh, Z to the power, uh, you know, N or something. But here there is Z minus W. I mean, yeah, yeah. So we are we are just you would you would uh, I mean you would remember that you can also expand it instead of it's just a, 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 a I mean Laura expansion of something where where you are not expanding about a, a, I mean z equal to zero. Yeah. Right. That's that's all. Okay. So uh, uh, here the this uh, L minus uh, n that is written here that is not yeah. the same as the. That and then uh, if you expand it about zero, right? Or is it? 
so these 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 are modes right so you 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 could you could expand this around something so you could also choose you know for example if you want to just you know map on on to uh, what you, what we did there you could also just just do this right so five said five zero that is going to be z to the uh, sorry n minus two ln five zero right so this uh, ln above and ln below are same yeah i'm 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 just expanding around so sorry this is a minus but anyway So yeah, so these, I mean, these are, so this is a more, I mean, more sort of, I mean, more sort of general expression if you wish, but these are modes of uh, T of Z, okay? So, yeah. All right. All right, are there any more questions? Sir, right. uh, I'm just yeah. uh, in the yeah, quiz. Sure. Uh, there was there's just a, a term used, uh, chiral antichiral. I mean, could you just yeah, that oh, was no, sorry, sorry. So that's that's just you know, if you have something which is so yeah, I mean, chiral and yeah, antichiral is equivalent to I mean, equivalent to I mean, just holomorphic and 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 anti holomorphic. Okay. okay, okay. So that's that's just I mean, I'm so sorry, sorry if I sort of use something without uh, defining it. All right, any more uh, questions? Okay, if not, let me try and stop sharing and stop recording first.